as part of my healing. Yeah. I have talked to people one-on-one, -on -one, personally, friends. Have I ever put this out there to the public? No, never. But it is real. But it is your real. truth. It's it really has to is. go. It has. You have yeah. to speak your truth, right? This is what your purpose is. I have to walk the. I have to walk the talk, and mm -hmm. that's where I am in my journey. I am now ready to. I mean, yeah. Is, say that, is, I say that the right way. I have to. Yeah, I have. This to, has to go on. It's it's time yes. for us for you to. Because you have to... How many people are out there that have lived and suppressed it for over 20 years like I have? How many people need to hear someone say, this was my truth, and look what I've done to come to the healing level I've come to, which is way beyond what I could imagine. Yeah. It, it's, it's real. It takes guts. It does take guts, and it's real. And you saw my energy shift earlier and how yeah. the fear started attacking me. I get to where I can't breathe, and... I did what I needed, but you know what? I couldn't have done that without all the work I've done. Uh, uh, I we're, doing, we're doing good to, together. Yeah. We're doing good together. I was able to shift and go, you know, yeah. okay. I recognize what that was. Yeah. So many people don't even know how to do that. And it's not an insult to be, I didn't know until I learned. Mm -hmm. We don't know to recognize what's triggering us and what we, what we create when we do that, you know? So... So yeah, um, it is real. It there are times that it is still very heavy and hard. But so when I lost a child, the irony is, and, and a lot of people would think I'm crazy to say this, but um, I didn't believe it. And so the doctors, I actually was so good at convincing myself that that's not what happened that I convinced the doctors that that did not happen. And in my file, it actually said I just had a ruptured cyst. So I went about my life. I just had a ruptured cyst. 20 years later, to the day, <laughs> I had an extremely powerful experience, beyond words, that came to me, and all this knowledge came to me of the past 20 years, 23 years, because going back to the 20 and then 23, and so when I was 43, I had major clarity of what all had happened, and I had to face it. At that point, I had to say, okay, this happened when I was 20, and I got a lot of work to do. Through I had been doing work on that for three years already. Okay. So at 40, 40, I said, I'm, I'm tired of this. <laughs> i got work to do. And then at 43, I realized, okay, now there's this other thing that happened when I was 23. And when I started putting the pieces together, I realized that the, it came to me on the exact day, 20 years later, what had happened. And it was the first time in my conscious mind I actually knew that that had happened. And I know that a lot of people say, no, you were really in denial. I was so in denial, I did not know what happened. Because when the doctor told me that, I said, no, there's no way. He thought it was an atopical pregnancy, and I, I look at that. And I said, no, it, it couldn't be, you know, and I rationalized every reason it couldn't be. And I was like, no, it can't be that. So I never accepted it. Mm -hmm. And so here I am at 43. I've been three years working on the attack, and now I'm like, oh, now there's this whole other layer of stuff that I have to deal with, and um, I spent six weeks crying all day, every day. But it was a beautiful healing experience because I had just become a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. It was a month after I finished my training, and I just had all these wounds I had to heal, you know? So before I could really heal do yourself. a whole lot more with other people, I had to heal myself. So the universe just brought that to me and dumped it in my lap and said, you're going to deal with this. And that's kind of what happened. And now I, I can't turn back. I can't stop. You have to go forward. I, I have to. I have to. Like you said, I have to take it to the next level of, of, of healing, of awareness, of expanding consciousness. It's, I've come to understand so many things about those experiences that, that have shown me, you know, why I made the decisions I made in my life. Why I have, you know, fear. Fear was driving me. It's a bad thing. Fear drives you. Well, that's right. You. Absolutely. And I came to a place of, and I, I feel I feel very compelled to say this because of the story people have heard. Yes, I carried anger and pain. Everybody. All of that for no. years. But I will tell you, I spent three years doing work on the attack, and I thought, okay, I've, I've, I've dealt with that. I'm, I'm good, you know. So then after all this other stuff, here it is, um, it's been six years since I really started working on that, and in the last year, oh my gosh, the, the things that have transpired are beyond words, but in a nutshell, to summarize, I actually came to a point 
where I even said this out loud, and I to, to someone else, I said, oh my gosh, I actually feel so much love for this person that attacked me when I was 20. I feel unconditional love, forgiveness, all of that. Now, when those pains come back, it's the memory of the experience. Like you said, it's the memory of how you felt at that time that hurts. It's not the situation. And when I realized that, I was like, that was just a situation. That doesn't have to define me for the rest of my life. That was just a circumstance that happened. I don't need to judge it as good or bad. It just happened. But what I came to, I actually had this whole dream. I have a lot of dreams and visions. You mentioned about my interdimensional travel and all these things unfolded to show me that, um, you know, he was in a dark place and I was in his path. And that's what happened. You know, it, it's that simple. And that's not to diminish it. That's not to take, for anyone who's been through that, it is extremely traumatic. And that's not to take away from their pain and their trauma, or my own. It's not to take away from that. It's just that I've been able to do enough work to come to a place where I just, it doesn't have to define me or stop me. It tries. I mean, that fear came up earlier to like, don't speak, don't speak. You know, you don't have a voice. Um, because he threatened me and silenced me, as the way I tell people is I can no longer be silenced. I was silenced for over 20 years, and I can no longer be silenced. I have to speak. I have to speak. I have to have a voice. I have to help other people have a voice. And that's what I've been able to come to and actually say it was a bad, it, it wasn't what I would call a positive experience. It wasn't what I would wish on anybody. But I can say I learned so much and I've grown tremendously from it and I know that I can help other people. My mission and my, my calling and purpose is not to help people that have these specific situations. And that's what I had to come to learn because I thought, I don't want to deal with that over and over every day. It wasn't to help people with a specific situation. It was an overall coming to having a voice, having your own freedom, having your own choice, and being in your own truth. Not denying it, not hiding from it, not suppressing it, living in your own truth. And once you do that and you own it and say, okay, this is my truth, it's, it kind of catches some people off guard when you speak it so bluntly. And it's like, you know, and, and they want to give you pity. And I'm like, I'm so past that. I appreciate your compassion and I pre appreciate your caring. But I don't need, you know, that, I'm not there, you know, I don't, I don't need pity, I don't need consoling, I just need you to say, what I want people to do is say, okay, how can she inspire me to find my truth and speak it and own it and be okay with it? That's really what it's all about, for me. It's because um, we all have some kind of... Scars. Scars. Is that scars? Scars is what I call it. Yes, we all have these scars. This, this weird scars. Everybody has it from the from their twenties. Yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. And and so many. Some people try to. I kind of see different schools of it. Some people try to really make it about. They want the pity, and they want it to. Be, they want the victim mentality. Oh, woe is me, and it's so bad. And I just want everybody to think that I'm entitled to this, this, and this because of what I went through. And they want it to be the worst situation that could possibly have happened to anybody. Then you have the other people that just want to ignore it and suppress it, which I was one of those. Oh, that didn't happen. And just, I was in so much confidence. I'm like, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, whatever, you know. And point being is there's, there's, a, there's a happy medium. There's a, there's a place of saying, okay, Yes, there was a period of time where I felt like a victim, and I had an experience that victimized me. But I don't have to own that for the rest of my life and live in it. I, I own that it happened. I recognize it. I accept it. But I don't have to define, again, I don't have to define myself by that. And I want people to know that. It really can, it, it really is possible to not allow that to own you and define you. And what kind of mindset or practices would you recommend for anybody to who probably are scared as we uh, and me and you we all are and you know they're watching this mm -hmm. maybe not ready to come out yet and trying to address their inner deeper 
pass. Yeah. How would you? What should they do? Well, I to gradually come to the level that you are in. I mean, probably they won't be able to do it because you are you know, way in other level, <laughs> different dimensions. We're talking about different dimensions here. Um, it for me in this physical dimension, <laughs> what what really shifted it for me the most. There's so many things. Are you feeling a, a, like a really surge of emotions right now? No, not emotions. What which I appreciate you asking because I actually feel really light and free right now. Or because you just let it, let but it go. But I am feeling um, a little bit of that pressure here again where I feel like something's trying to silence me. Because you but are so used to being silenced. Yes. It is in your head. It, it, I, I know it right it, now. Well, it is. It's, it's, um, it's You've been doing it for 20 years, yes. and now all of a sudden you're coming out, talking yes. to me, having a conversation. You're yeah. not used to this conversation. But when I recognize what it is, I can allow it. I'm, I'm very well aware of this feeling of like something <coughs> this heavy weight on my chest, but it's like, it's okay. It's okay. It's already out there now. Just keep on going. So, um, but I don't, but I feel very happy. I don't feel sad at all. I don't feel depressed. I don't feel... You, you know, talking about something like that could really could really do that to somebody. But when I was able to identify earlier, okay, that's just fear. That's all that is. And I, I can either ride that wave of fear or I can work through it and, and you know, be okay with that. So, um, so yeah, there's some heaviness there, but, I'm, but I actually do feel very free in having like spoken that. Like that, I finally yeah. got it out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, for me on my journey, what really turned the tables for me mm. were, um, was Reiki. I had many things that happened before then. I went through energy work for a while with different energy therapists. I, not, not, not Reiki and not to that level and to that depth, but just dabbled in things here and there. Um, kind of my last, I would call traumatic, you know, that was a traumatic experience happened in my, um, uh, early 20s? It started no, late 30s, 30s all the way into, you know, still in that space and time in certain aspects. My husband was very, very, very ill, and he became terminally ill. So this was another situation? This was another situation. And I had <coughs> to really do a lot of work on myself spiritually. He was doing a lot of work on himself spiritually because he said, if I'm going to heal, I'm going to heal through spirit. And that kind of guided me to start... It you know, kind of woke me up to going, you know, that, I believe that. I really do. So um, so he's still with us, and he's critically ill, but not terminally ill. And a lot of work's been done over the years and, and so forth. But having said that, when he was at his sickest, he asked me, what are you going to do when I'm gone? And I mean, that's just not a question everybody that's gets asked. That's a hard everybody. question to, uh, to a wife, especially. Yes. And I said, well, what do you mean? I'm going to mourn. And he said, no, I... I will feel better moving on if I know what your plans are. That I know that you're not just going to... Crash and yeah, stop. Yeah, exactly. And I had had this calling for several years to become Reiki. It's getting Reiki. So I said, I think I'm going to do this holistic healing thing. And I, of course I first said, I'm going to hole up and hide from the world. Again, I was ready to go. I had, I had already prepared myself to go back into my shell. Okay, I'm going to be depressed and I'm going to hide from everybody and I'm going to stay home and I'm going to do artwork and I'm going to do gardening and reading. I, I specifically told him that's what I was going to do. And he said, well, what else are you going to do? What are you going to do for you? And I said, that's all for me. That's part of my healing. Because when he was sick, the way I was healing was by staying, I was, a, I was also a caregiver, so I was staying home more than usual and I was doing a lot of artwork. And I found a lot of healing in that. But I also knew there was more. You know, I had to, I had, there was more that I had to do. So I said, okay, I'm going to do this holistic healing. I don't know how and when and where, but that's what I'm going to do. And then over the next year, as he started kind of shifting and, and doing some healing, I was doing, I had all these messages and clarity coming to me and doing research, and long story short, I ended up doing Reiki. This kind of happened. And I was also enrolled in a college where I was going to be a holistic health practitioner, but the, but the energy rate, energy work, was pulling me so hard that I was like, you know, I'm taking anatomy and neuroanatomy and physiology and at the same time trying to do energy work and it was a really big tug of war between mind and spirit and 
and I just got clarity that you're really going to go more down this, this, this spiritual way. path. Yeah, and so I did, and I've I've never looked back. I've I've not only done a lot, you know, quite a bit of Reiki work and training. I've trained in other energy healing modalities since then. I have started teaching myself about a lot of study and research on you know, metaphysics and universal laws, and I started better understanding energy, and I've just, that's been my study and my work for several years, it's just energy. And the more I use it, the more I understand, well, we all use it, but the more I understand it and how to use it and, and apply it, I've just, I mean, the healing is just amazing. I'm shown new things all the time that can help me on my journey. Okay. New knowledge and so forth. Short question. What is the energy right now? Um, it's peaceful for the most part, but there is a little bit of... Um, You can see it in the most raw fashion. Yeah, what's good? I, you know, I always have to kind of tune in to words when I'm doing this. I don't know how to describe it. I feel... Uncertainty? No, I feel... I don't know how to describe it. Okay, there's... It, it's not sad. It's not depression. It's not heaviness like it was. There's some heaviness, but it's not, it's not a sad heaviness. It's it the, okay. The words I feel relief. Okay. But relief is a little bit lower vibration than where I am when I'm just like oh, I'm flying through the clouds and life is great. And yes. you want to be there. And, and well, I love to be there, but I also know that that would be me suppressing it if I tried to be there all the time. I need to allow this. But it's a new sen It's a new level for me of relief that I have not had before, and I need to experience that. So I do feel very peaceful for having shared some information today and I and you feel a lot of relief and I feel like my energy inside is shifting like from today onwards it's going to be different yes I, I feel a, this it's was a big milestone for me okay so this yes. today this interview was a setting stone yes. and grounding it in the earth like this is what it yes. is and this is what it's going to go from now on and onwards done Yes, that's that is very much that is very much how I feel. It was it was very necessary to not have any any facade, not have any filtering of what I say, and yeah. just put it out there because there's very few people I've allowed myself to have this conversation. It's so. real. It's real. Yeah. And okay, now let, let's let's shift the conversation into dimensions okay okay now this is going to the next level right now what are dimensions in the first place if somebody doesn't have a clue what is a dimension gosh that's a good question because I don't know that's a hard thing to describe it's some people call them dimensions or realms or you know different worlds um, some people just use the word frequency to describe it but it's you know, so many people think that we've just got this earth right here that we're on and it's just our physical human beings and that's the extent of life. Mm -hmm. That's the extent of, uh, we'll take it back to when I talked about electrons, that's the extent of matter. You know, that's, I mean, there are people that really think that and that they don't see or feel or, or understand what's outside of that. Um, we as human beings are third dimensional. Three dimensional. So we're three dimensional, okay. and we are in the third dimension. There's a lot of teachings out there. Um, I don't know that I'd say a lot, but there are teachings, things that I study often and, and follow, and so you know, follow the the new awareness of um, that humans when they when we first came to this planet, we were a much higher dimensional being. You know, we were like we were in fifth dimension, so we weren't as dense. In other words, we weren't as heavy. The, the lower the dimension, the heavier. Okay. Okay, so the higher the dimension, the lighter. So we were more of these light, luminous beings. You know, we had this human figure, but you could almost see through us, and you could see light coming out of us. And it was it was a very peaceful, harmonious world. species and world, absolutely. 
But because we have free will, over time, our free will, our power of choice, many people chose to go more on the heavier shadow sides of energy. And that created our density. So that, that's, that's one, you know, that's, that's a very strong theory out there that over many, 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 many thousands of years, we have become way more of a dense being. Now, um, I mentioned before, just in conversation with you, not on camera, but that I don't believe, but we talk, I talked about, I believe, there are many people out there that believe we're going into the seventh dimension, or, excuse me, let me try that again, seventh golden age. So there's kind of this whole theory that as you go through a golden age, we're way less dense, we're, we're at a higher vibration, a, a, you know, um, a lighter being, if you will, which some people have described to look like aliens. You know, they actually describe these things they've seen in their dreams. They think they've been, um, and I'm not saying they have or haven't, because that's not for me to determine, but they say they've, you know, they've been, uh, what, what, what is it, uh, oh, good grief, I just drew a blank the word. I, mean, I want to say accosted, but that's not the right word. You know, when they're, um, Oh, I can't believe I can't okay. think of the word. It's you know, okay. when people say abducted, 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 excuse me, accosted, I knew that was definitely not the right word. They say, I've been abducted, and they infused their energy or whatever and sent me back to Earth. I mean, there's a lot of different theories out there of people that have had various interdimensional travel experiences. So, so having said that, um, when we're in a golden age, we're believed to be a fifth dimensional being. So what is believed by many right now is that we, many of us, those who are open to it, are really shifting back and forth between third and fourth dimension. So in fourth dimension, we can see and pick up things that people just in the third dimension can't. And I believe my whole life I've been able to see into the fourth dimension and, and see things others can't. And do you think that because we're go going through that golden age, like now more people are shifting to the fourth dimension? I do. I, I do. And I, I don't, you know, I think it's going to be almost in a phase, if you will. I mean, I don't think overnight, you know, for example, a lot of people thought, you know, on December 12th, 2012, it's just going to shift. It, it's not going to be immediate. It's not going to be overnight. But it, if we look back to that date, to this time right now, look at what else happened. We've had some major shifts. Yes. Um, a lot more people are aware and open to things that, you know, they would not have even considered. Examples. Big examples. Um, that's a good question. Um, even, I mean, this is a small example in a little small town, Dennis in Texas, but even an example of what I do. Four years ago, if I even said the word Reiki or Reiki Master or he energy, People immediately were like, oh, she's of Satan. She is worshiping Satan. That is evil. Or, you know, whatever. She's the Antichrist. You, you, you name it. I've, I've heard it. Um, nowadays, they go, oh, really? Well, tell me more about that. What is that? Yeah. I mean, I've seen that what? much of a people, shift people in that short what? time. And, they're, and, and these are people that walk the same lifestyle that these people did four years ago. So that's just one example on a small scale. You know, globally, I think, I mean, even look at the Pope that we have now. I mean, I don't know if you have followed any of that, but just just little clips I've seen. I'm not, I'm not a big um, follower of any one particular thing mm -hmm. by any means. But just in the media, just in social media, seeing some of the quotes of the Pope we have nowadays is so much more, has a much broader perspective about what's going on out there. Not just, okay, I only believe in, I feel like the sides of a lot of people's boxes are falling down, like you said, yes. becoming more of a table. More and more people are like, hey, I went out of this box. What else is out there? Yeah. There's a whole lot more out there. And I've seen that shift in so many ways. But on the same note, those who insist on remaining in this heavy, dense third dimension in solid, deep fear are scared to death right now. Why? So they are creating pandemonium. Mm. They're creating chaos and fear, and, and I, I believe the media is feeding that. 
Okay, yes, you make sense. So if that, make sense. I'm, I'm trying to think of how to yes. shift to say that. Well, you make sense. That's what I'm talking Is about. Is that what is happening? So you have these people that are just insistent upon, no, I don't want change, I don't want change, it has to be this way. Then you have others who are open, and, oh, change, this is, this is change for the good. Look what we can do with this. We can raise ourselves to a higher dimension, and we can manifest whatever we want. We, can re- we have that power. But so many people are afraid of that. Because and change. so you have this... Struggle going, power struggle. Absolutely, absolutely. Because structure is very breaking apart. Yes, absolutely, very true. And 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 again, it goes back to, I believe there are systems in place that are trying to create more and more brainwashing, more and more fear, take away more of our freedom. But yet they're doing it through the disguise of oh we're we're giving you freedom if you follow us we'll give you freedom. Yeah, complete lie. Absolutely. We can only find that in our own journey and within our own selves. And to me, if we're exploring all these other dimensions and what's out there, and of course I only talked about the dimensions that us as humans experience. I mean, there are, I do, you know, I I see and experience angels and different guides. Um, Sometimes they just, they come in and show themselves to me and, I see, you know, what are you here for? Is there a message? Or, you know, I see, I see things that people might describe as aliens. Okay, so very interesting. That means you have met angels, like you have yes. talked, communicated with them. Yes. An example? How, how did that go? What were they looking for? What did they say? Well... What was the impression of human beings, this weird race? It wasn't, it wasn't that. It was never their impression. It was what it was every time for me is them coming in and guiding me on my journey and giving me a clear message of what I need to do to, as you say, take it to the next level. Where am I going next? I've had some really powerful experiences. I've had powerful experiences with clients that I was told you need to share this message with them because they don't see us and they don't know we're here, so you need to tell them what we're telling you. I've had my own personal experiences too where I've been looking for guidance on how do I go, how do I move forward, and boom, they are there and they show me and they tell me. So it was never like a conversation, and I know a lot of people do that. Some people channel them in and actually get, it's almost like an interview or a conversation. You know, they'll come in and they'll say, well, what do you think about this? For me, it's just the download of information that they give me, and I have to translate it. That's the best way I know to describe it. I have to translate it into how does that, how does that translate into this third dimensional being? Wow, that is very exciting. Like, you know just talking to somebody, like a spirit, yeah. directly talking, communicating. Yeah, and I've... And it makes me feel like one day when we die, we don't know, we might be there on the other side, talking uh, to somebody yeah. else. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We, hey man, I was there, like a couple <laughs> of years ago. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so, yeah, they, they come to me with messages, they, they give me clarity. Sometimes I, it's in my mind's eye, I don't visually... Well, can you feel if there is somebody here? Y- yes, if um, I tune in. Can you tune it, in? I, I can, um, sometimes I can't help it, it just, it, the energy distracts me and yeah. it pulls me really strongly, but sometimes I'm, um, it, because of my energy always being dynamic, mm-hmm. it depends on where I am as to what I pick up. For example, when I was in fear earlier, I picked up a, a heavier dimensional being. For example, human ghost. They're even lower dimension than us. You know, they don't have a third density existence. So they're in even lower dimension. I only pick that up when I'm in fear. If I'm in in a place of love, I can't pick that up. And they also can't get into my energy field. Because you can't have two energies exist in the same, in the exact same space. Which is why when you come in here, our energies match up. That's just, that's just how it works. Energy one of us or both of us have to shift to kind of get into the same type of energy space because that's just how energy works. So if you came in here in, you know, in one place and I'm in a complete polar opposite place, that's where conflict comes in. We're like, whoa, 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 you know, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? won't be able to relate with Exactly. Either. So to connect, you have to be closer in frequency. So, so same with dimensions. If I'm, you know, I'm giving Reiki, I'm flying high, I'm working with divine and the universe and all that. I mean, I've got angels coming in. I've got, you know, that powerful is, things. That is just intriguing. So angels it, coming in. Yeah. 
uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give one example. Um, early on, I started doing Reiki. I, I was a Reiki master, but I hadn't been doing it for a long, long time. Um, I have a client who had a really has has a really bad problem with her left shoulder and her shoulder blade and everything. And um, so she was laying on the table. The whole it, it's a it's a very long story to tell the whole session, but the gist of it was I kept picking up. When I would work around her shoulders, I kept picking up shoulder blades. I mean, shoulder blades, excuse me, wings around her shoulder blades. And I would, I could actually hear this, like, you know, like, like they were taken off. And then in my mind's eye, I saw these white wings, and the right wing, my right shoulder, lifted up and made this really loud noise and came back down. And it was, she was laying face down on the table, by the way, and I could see these wings. Her left shoulder that was injured, the wing kept, it was just like watching an injured bird. It kept trying to lift and it would fall back down. And then it lifted a little more the next time. And I just kept doing my work. And the whole time it kept lifting higher. And finally, I felt these wings lift and I heard it. It was really loud. And I, I heard her go, I just heard it go, you know, like she was flying around the room. And then, and she jerked really hard. Well, anyway, she flew around for a while in my, in, in again, if this is in a, a different dimension and when she came back into the body we both jumped so hard and that that's when I knew I was like there's no mistake in this we both jumped so hard she almost came off the table I almost fell backwards and I was like did you just feel that I mean it was powerful and I said do you know what just happened and I told her what I experienced and what did she say she said I was flying so fast, I was so dizzy, and I didn't even know about the wings, but all I knew is I was flying through multiple dimensions, I was seeing angels, I saw family members that had passed away, I saw, you know, she's describing all this, and I was like, yeah, you Whoa, were an angel this is, this is next level. Yeah, it is powerful, and that's what we can do by expanding our consciousness. We can come into a place where we can have more of those experiences. How was she flying? Was she an angel? She, because I'm gonna fly now. I'm just saying. I mean, I was talking about these wings for a while. Yeah. Huh? I want some wings. She um, she felt the movement. She didn't see it. She didn't so see the, the there was an angel inside of her. What was that? Who was that? What was that? I. That's a good question. I don't. Sometimes they can come inside of us, and it's almost like shape shifting, and, and that's a lot. What, what they call a physical medium can do that and allow them to come into their body. With most people, though, with her, it's more of just her guides showing me the healing that they're doing. And what they were doing was trying to heal her her shoulder blades, her wings. Now, what do I believe that in, the, in another... Do I believe that she is a physical human being that incarn incarnated as a human being? But yes, do I believe she used to be an angel? Yes. That I believe, see, there's, there's this, in the angel therapy, there's this whole study of different realms.